Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk, where three best selling authors talk all things bookish with you for 10 short and sweet minutes. I'm Marie Bostwick. I am here with my friends, Rachel Linden. There she is, Catherine Ray. And today we are here with Jenny Walsh, whose new book that will be coming out soon, Unsinkable, is available for pre orders right now. It is a fascinating story. There's a lot going on. Jenny, just tell us a little bit about your wonderful book. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me. Yes, Unsinkable is coming out soon, January 9th. Please pre-order. Um, <laughs> it um, it's a story that is kind of a lot of stories. It's a World War I story. It's a World War II story. It's a biofic. And then the one thing that gets a lot of people really excited is it's also a Titanic story. Um, it's told from the point of view of two women. One is the biofic portion, Violet Jessup, who is a real woman who survived the Titanic, and two additional shipwrecks. Um, why that woman keeps getting back on ships okay. was um, beyond me when I first started researching. Um, and then the second point of view is Daphne, who is kind of this like collaboration of 39 different women who made up the special executives um, operation during the Second World War. So Ooh. amazing women. And I had a blast telling their story. I just don't understand, like after the first shipwreck, why mm -hmm. you would get back on a ship and, and then another one. And then she still gets on a ship. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. That's so cool. Okay, well, this is a gorgeous book, gorgeous cover. Also, it is coming out the same day as mine, Recipe for Charm Life. So we're release day sisters, which is fun. Um, I'm just fascinated by this. So I'm curious, There, is, this is a weighty, you've got a lot of weighty concepts and historical mm -hmm. stuff in here. What was the first spark of the idea? What sparked this story for you? I wanted to tell a Titanic story, um, but they've already been done and done so well so I was brainstorming with my agent and she's like well what's something new you got so I went digging and searching and I've written biofic in the past so I was like well that's a good place to start and I came across Violet Jessup and to echo your question earlier I read the the line about her that says she survived all these shipwrecks and I was like why like <laughs> stop getting back on boats and I had to figure out why and I really could have told a story just about Violet. There was enough there. But while researching her, I kind of stumbled upon this idea for a second storyline. And then Daphne kind of came from there. Hmm. Wow. I have to say, you made something that we all think is familiar. As you just said, there have been so many stories told about the Titanic that we all think we know. But you made it really fresh. So number one, kudos to you. But Thank number two... How did you do that? Where did you find these, these aspects of the story that we didn't know? Well, I was extremely fortunate that Violet had a memoir. So oh. I dug into that. I lived and breathed it. I um, don't know if I should admit this, but I literally retyped the whole thing, like her entire memoir, so that her voice was like my voice. And of course, I don't use what I wrote, but all 80,000 words or whatever it was, I retyped and then I right. went from there. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was speaking Violet. But the funny thing is that in her memoir, she still doesn't really answer why. So I kind of took all the facets of her life and gave her a why. And I think it makes sense. Um, readers will have to yeah. tell me. Um, but yeah, I, I was so fortunate that she had that memoir. That was really my kicking off spot. And then for Daphne's character, who is the secret agent during the war, I had 39 women with their stories that I dug into and researched. So I just had, I had more research than I knew what to do with. And, but I mean, that's not really a problem. That's awesome. Okay. Hey, you know what, readers, like, Never again use the words, oh, like crank out a book. <laughs> when you say stuff like that, it just, you just sound ignorant, okay? We don't crank out books. We bleed onto the no. computer keys. We type out, although I feel like you would type out the entire book, but I can see why you would do that because yeah. yes, that her voice at that point just would inhabit you. So yeah. gosh, that's amazing, but that's above and beyond. That's amazing. So 
this is a very complex story. It's really two stories back and forth. As a, a writer, I'm really curious, like, how did you, how did you approach structuring this book with these two stories, two different women, they do not know each other at all. And yet, how do you find those like connection points that make two stories into one really terrific read? Well, thank you. Um, in my past novel, The Call of the Wrens, that also has two storylines that kind of converge and the, the characters come together. And in that one, I wrote one point of view all the way through and then went back and kind of plugged in the second one and alternate it. And I tried that with this one and it just wasn't working. So in Unsinkable, I am going back and forth. The timelines really play off each other. And it's really important that they, they do that and that everything comes together at the perfect time. So I um, would get in Violet's head, I would write her chapter and then I would go over to Daphne's and I would write hers and try to have her voice coming in. Uh, it was definitely challenging that way versus how I did it with Paul the Wrens, but hopefully I I pulled it off. I just really wanted to hit those notes, especially because their storylines happen so far apart. Um, mm. but, but there are, I don't want to give things away, but there are connection points and you do bring it up all together in a satisfying way at the end. So, and, and you see personality wise, there are similarities between these women. I, I don't want to get, there's just, there's a, it's, it's good. You guys need to read it. This is like a book that makes you think. And, um, and if you're a big fan like me of the whole Titanic thing, that was what grabbed me was that I was like, oh yeah, no, got to read this one. Um, I've read lots of Titanic stuff and you brought freshness and just things I didn't know to this. So congratulations, wonderful. Jenny, I feel like we need way more time, but we just don't have it because it's the 10 minute book talk and all. So um, I'm gonna tell people, go buy, go pre-order the book. You're gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be a great January read for you. Jenny, but thank you for being here with us. Before you go, Jenny Walsh, tell us what is bringing you joy today? The sun is out and it's a beautiful day and I'm going to take my dogs for a walk after this. <laughs> you can hear them. I have a Newfoundland and a golden retriever, if you can hear me, and they are, they're ready to get outside. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. Well, enjoy your sunshine and your walk. Yeah. yeah. And they, just, yeah. And tell, you know, our house, we've always called Newfoundland Newfaloops. I don't know why. <laughs> So tell the new Faloop and the Golden that we love them. And thank you for letting, uh, you know, you be on here. And thank you, Jenny, for joining us. Best of luck, friends. Go get Unsinkable. Order it right now. Seriously, turn the computer off and go now. We'll be yeah. waiting. And Rachel's okay. book. And then we'll, <laughs> and book. And we'll see. You. you can have two books yeah. at this time. Two books at the same time. Right? It's, it's, yeah, it's a twofer. So it's a no brainer. All right, Perfect. gang, we will see you next week here at the 10 Minute Book Talk. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you.